Laplace's equation. We're going to do two things here. The first thing is derive Laplace's equation, and we'll do that by first deriving Poisson's equation. Laplace's equation is a special case of Poisson's equation. But then after that, I want to discuss the meaning of that equation to sort of give you an intuitive feel of what Laplace's equation is calculating. Derivation of Laplace's equation. So the derivation of Laplace's equation starts by deriving Poisson's equation. That's the more general equation. So in electrostatics, we have Gauss's law, which says the divergence of the electric flux equals the volume charge density. Well, in linear and isotropic media, the permittivity can still be inhomogeneous. So this may be a function of position, but epsilon times E, I can replace D in the equation up here and bring that down. But I'm not free to bring this permittivity term to outside of this divergence operation because this is a spatial derivative, and we've just said that the permittivity can be inhomogeneous, a function of position, and the derivatives will not be zero. Well, in electrostatics, we like to solve scalar differential equations instead of vector equations. So remember that the electric field intensity is related to the electric potential through this negative gradient. So let's go ahead and replace the electric field intensity with the negative gradient of the electric potential. Well, all we do is bring the negative sign over to the right-hand side of the equation, and we arrive at Poisson's equation for inhomogeneous media. By inhomogeneous, this permittivity could be a function of position. Well, what if the permittivity is not a function of position? What if it is homogeneous? We have the same permittivity everywhere. Well, at that point, this becomes a constant. It can be brought to the outside of the divergence operation. And then in fact, it can be brought over to the right-hand side of the equation. So when we do that, we arrive at Poisson's equation for homogeneous media. Now on to Laplace's equation. Laplace's equation is Poisson's equation but in the absence of charge. So if we set the charge term to be zero, then the inhomogeneous Poisson's equation becomes the inhomogeneous Laplace equation. Inhomogeneous meaning permittivity can be a function of position. Well, what if the permittivity is homogeneous? It is constant everywhere. Again, it can come to the outside of the divergence operation and then in fact brought to the right hand side and when it combines with zero it's all just zero then we end up with laplace's equation for homogeneous media which is really just saying that the laplacian of the electric potential equals zero and this is the equation that we solve most of the time because the materials between the plates of a capacitor or a resistor that medium between the plates does not have any charge. It's the plates that have the charge. This del squared operation is called the Laplacian. In the beginning of this course, we talked about the Laplacian for scalar functions, which is what's happening here. But there's also a Laplacian for vector functions, but we're not using that here. So let's think about this no charge thing in electrostatics. Well, here's a, a parallel plate capacitor. We have the top plate with a bunch of positive charge. We have the bottom plate with a bunch of negative charge. But if we're solving Laplace's equation, that's just for the material between the plates. There is no charge here. All of the charge is in the plates, or at least on the surface of the plates, but definitely not in this medium in between. So we are free to use Laplace's equation for calculating the electric potential in this medium between the plates. And we will use that for both resistors and capacitors. Let's summarize what we've done. And I like to put these equations in sort of a quad chart. In the top row, we have Poisson's equation. In the bottom row, we have Laplace's equation. In the second column, we have the equations for inhomogeneous media, where the permittivity is a function of position. 
And in the last column, we have the equations for homogeneous media. And it's this last one that we tend to solve most of the time in electrostatics. This is what we'd do, be doing in this course. But let's go through some notes about these. So we will use Laplace's equation to calculate how the electric potential is varying throughout a device like a resistor or a capacitor. We'll assume some kind of applied voltage or a charge, and we'll use this to calculate the electric potential between those plates. So differential equations with this scalar quantity, electric potential, are much easier than the vector equations. And remember that the electric potential and the electric field intensity are the same physical thing. It's just two different mathematical ways of expressing the same thing. So we use Poisson's equation when there's charge involved, and we use Laplace's equation when there's not. But almost everything we're doing here is Laplace's equation. And in fact, Laplace's equation for homogeneous media. Laplace's equation is huge in electrostatics. Really, it's just because it's easier to solve than solving vector equations with the electric field. There is something called the uniqueness theorem. There is only one solution to this. That means if you take a wild guess and then you plug it back into Laplace's equation, if you can take the Laplacian of your guess and it equals zero, that is the solution because there can't be any other solution. In my opinion, it's not enough to just have the math equations. I really want to try to give you an intuitive feel of what Laplace's equation is saying and what the numbers it calculates mean. And hopefully if I do my job here, you can even visualize what the solution will be without even doing any math, and you can use that as a self-check. So here's Laplace's equation, this del squared u equals zero. Well, that del squared is really like a three-dimensional second-order derivative. Well, remember back from calculus, we had like the first derivative test and second derivative test and things like that. And if you remember, a second order derivative is essentially quantifying curvature. Well, in Laplace's equation, what we're saying is this curvature of u has to equal zero. And so really the solution to Laplace's equation says the solution has to vary linearly. So we summarize functions satisfying Laplace's equation very linearly, and we'll see that. Let's define some region of space, which is in this big square. And of course, I've divided up into a bunch of little tiny pieces for visualization of this. Well, let's say the electric potential as is known at some points in this area of space that I've identified. So we see we have positive nine volts near the upper right, and negative nine volts near the lower left. And so these are different positions and even in different shapes. So a question might come up, what, what's the electric potential between these two regions? And those two regions might be the plates of a capacitor and we need to know the electric potential between those plates. So how do we calculate what's between them? That's really the role of Laplace's equation. So we write Laplace's equation over this whole thing but we have some boundary conditions. We know what it is in certain points, and we can use that information to calculate it at every other point. When I do that, I end up with something that looks like this. And we notice if we go from one object to the next where the voltage was known, that is varying linearly. So I like to think of Laplace's equation sort of like a number filler inner. It fills in all the numbers between two known states and in a manner that varies linearly. Here's another example. Yeah, suppose we know the voltage around some closed region and we wanna calculate it everywhere else. Well, we would solve Laplace's equation in this white region using all these known values as a boundary condition. And Laplace's equation fills in the number. So. It's a number filler inner where the numbers we fill in vary linearly between whatever known conditions were given to the problem. 